going on guys dom here and today we're going to be talking about some things that, that the chinese riddler posted and if you guys don't know who that is the chinese riddler is a person who has high credibility in the pokemon community for giving us information in the form of riddles uh, for us to figure out and eventually usually they are right now this article was actually written by pokey jungle if you guys don't know who that is pokey jungle is um a very amazing guy he's awesome in writing articles as you can see he's also started his own youtube channel and as you can tell on screen he actually has the um the whole pokétuber face down pat so he's doing he's off to a good start but let's get right into the article and he does actually put a warning for us that this is unconfirmed information even though it is coming from the chinese riddler this is unconfirmed none of it is true possibly yet so let's get right into it uh he actually gives a small um blurb about the uh, Chinese Riddler, about who he is. Uh, he, a lot of hints in Pokemon Sun and Moon's returned for an image of Pokemon Sword and Shield. They're not confirmed, but they uh, largely mirror a May 4chan post. That's pretty cool. Um, this, this is the post in question we're, uh, we're looking at right here. So it has Grookey, the middle evolution is a question mark, and then we have a monkey with drums. A gorilla with drums, a green gorilla with drums. It kind of reminds me of a um, Beast Boy from uh, Teen Titans. We have Score Bunny. Then we have a uh, question mark for the middle evolution. And final evolution looks like a, a kind of like a a rabbit, a punk rock rabbit, if that makes sense. It's wearing like a jacket. Uh, it's like a studded belt and some jeans. We have Sobel. Um, middle evolution is question mark. It looks like James Bond with a lizard's head on it. So. <laughs> It's like it's supposed to be based on like some kind of super spy or something. Uh, we have another question mark after that. And then we have a the chipmunk from the shirt. So that implies that the chipmunk is most likely going to have a um, pre-evolution. That sounds awesome. I can't wait to see what that looks like exactly. Because people have been hinting about it and saying that it's already been, we've already been seen it. But we're not sure if we've seen this chipmunk that's on this shirt here or the pre-evolution. So um he actually didn't post anything about in here about the the one that we saw sitting in the stands. It's simply just the one in the picture. Okay, then we have uh, Corviknight. Uh, Corviknight is standalone, standalone Pokemon. I hope its uh, stats are decent enough for it to actually um, hold its own in the in the metagame that's eventually going to be fleshed out soon. Then we have the uh, Grass Pokemon. We have uh, the Gossip. Uh, was it Gossifleur? I'm probably mixing those two names up <laughs> in my head. That's fine. They're, then they're supposed to have a um, another evolution. Okay. Or is it saying that Dread Dreadnaw is having a pre-evolution? That's interesting. I feel like the the grass type, the second form, um, I feel like that would be the one that would be a middle evolution and has to turn into something else. I mean, it can't just end right there, can it? Really? Um, hopefully, I'm thinking maybe a dandelion. That's what maybe that's what I'm getting. If that makes sense, but could be wrong. Um, of course, we have Dreadnought, and we has like we have like <laughs> an evolution for him that looks like it's supposed to resemble Rhino from um, Spider-Man. Looks like a guy in a suit with a big knife on his head. Looks like some kind of Bleach character, honestly. Uh, it's super interesting to think uh, to look like to think about what he would look like if, after evolving. Um, I kind of, I'm hoping he turns into something that looks similar to Bowser, that would be pretty cool. And then we have our favorite, we have our uh, Wooloo right here, or Wooloo, um, I mean he evolves. I uh, hope that's what it's saying here, unless I'm uh, mistaking it, that it has an evolution to it, that would make sense. It wouldn't be its own standalone Pokemon, it has to turn into something else, and I'm probably going to put it on my team, whatever it is. And it looks like we have uh, a dog here with an electric tail. Okay, fair enough dog with an electric tail then we have um the one that was seen in the stands that was supposed to be like a different form okay so we have a really long a tall meowth the fat pikachu returns um lapras with music notes um a supposed evolution of far-fetched meowth that's and uh persian that are in a ball it looks like uh what kind of bird is that a a bird that eats pikachus okay and the sword and shield uh, legendaries and then we have the gigantic one i thought that they were saying that the this gigantic one here that was on the mountain it was just a pokemon that was dynamaxed okay so it shows shows that the pokemon found on a trainer's shirt is the latest the latest trailer is the evolution of the chipmunk squirrel greedunt hmm okay cool hence that corviknight will not evolve and doesn't have a pre-evolution hence that eldegoss that's the name i was trying to think of 
or less likely in my estimation, dread, uh, Dreadnought has a pre-evolution. Okay. Shows that Dreadnought has an even gnarlier looking evolution. So that's the, the man in the suit we saw that looks like a rhino. Hints that Wulu evolved or less likely the, the electric corgi Pokemon like Pokemon has pre-evolution. So that's what that's supposed to be, Gorgi. I'm not super up to date on my on my dog breeds, clearly. Um, so I can't wait to see what that looks like. An electric Gorgi. I knew we were getting a well, not new. I hoped that we were getting a Gorgi Pokemon. It looks like we're getting it. And it shows that the electric Gorgi evolves into the Pokemon seeing the Pokemon stands. Okay, so that means it's a, a pretty popular Pokemon for it to be somewhere in the stands of the um the stadiums because the stadiums the, these battles are the biggest things in the in the region. Includes Gigant Max forms for Meowth, Pikachu, and Lapras. Mm. See, the thing about that, about the Pikachu being Gigant Max, I mean, not, uh, yeah, oh, okay, so it says Gigant Max, okay. Like, I was gonna say, the, the Dynamax thing didn't, doesn't make sense for Pikachu. Because from what we've seen in the trailers, you have to put the Pokemon back inside the Pokeball and then Dynamax it and then throw it out. See, this Gigant Max thing, um, is just something that you can just do normally without putting the Pokemon in the Pokeball, it would make sense. Because we know Ash's Pikachu is not gonna go in, in its Pokeball. Come on now, it hasn't done that since episode one of the anime. And I think we're, they're over a thousand episodes. It hasn't gone in a Pokeball since. Giving a form to Meowth would also make sense given that Team Rocket actually um, is the the rival to Ash, Ka Ash Ketchum in the anime. Um, rival in the sense that they're constantly uh, showing up. They've been there since the beginning. They haven't gone anywhere. So giving me out the new form would make sense. Um, and Lapras. Uh, Lapras is, is, is a fan favorite, of course. We Everyone likes Lapras. It's the Pokemon that um, it got Ash around to the Orange Islands and it, during the Indigo League. Um, I mean, it's a fan favorite. It's get, it getting a new form is anything, anything that I would... It's not out of the ordinary, I guess. The music notes are something interesting. I love to see how that plays into everything. It seems like uh, music and... Uh, culture is a big theme in the Galar region. References G Galarian forms from Meowth and Persian, plus regional evolution for Farfetch'd, Surfetch'd. So the name that was the name that was pitched, um, that was <laughs> given, Surfetch'd. I guess to fit in with the whole regal feel of the Galar region. That makes perfect sense. If it's a real thing, the, I guess the, the name does sound kind of weird though. It kind of sounds a little, a tiny bit un un unbelievable, but it is what it is. References Pelican like Pokemon. Now the um. Pelican like Pokemon is supposed to be a Pokemon that is that targets Pikachu, it eats Pikachus. Um That is extremely interesting. I would love to see how that plays out in the anime with Ash's Pikachu first running into one of those Pokemon. Uh pegs the ruin drawing on the hill as a third legendary, probably Eternatus. Eternatus. Um so this giant Pokemon here is supposed to be that. I thought, because you guys can see based on the, like the clouds and stuff floating around it from the Dynamax, I think they had like clouds of, around it and lightning bolts and stuff around it. I thought this was just a Pokemon that they were, um, that they had Dynamax and it was just someone like portraying it in artwork, in old time artwork. So I guess like the way I was thinking was the first Pokemon to Dynamax, someone thought it was some amazing phenomenon. So they put it into the hillside and they kept that as part of their, as part of their culture. Um, but I guess it is, uh, maybe this, this Pokemon is the originator of the Dynamaxing and the forms that other Pokemon takes, other Pokemon take like Dynamaxing, uh, or Grookey is just an imitation of this. That's what I kind of thought with the, um, I kind of thought that the Mega Evolutions were like a different form, like a weaker form of um, the Primal Evolutions in some sense. But in fact, Mega Evolution is just um, derived from Serenus and Yvetal's um, energy emitting onto these stones. So, I guess that um, it could be, could just def definitely be just a completely different Pokemon, and I could be wrong about it uh, being just a Dynamax Pokemon. So just because Elika has gotten things right in the past doesn't mean they're always reliable, and this largely covers material we have previously seen. Enjoy speculating, but keep expectations in check. Um, so always let me know what you think. Yeah, check out their, their Discord. Uh, Pokey Jungle's Discord is pretty awesome. He's a pretty fair guy. His rules are pretty awesome. He's nothing out of the ordinary. He'll chat with you if he has time. I know he's a pretty busy guy. And if you guys definitely um, have the chance, please uh, support their uh, Patreon. They're awesome. They're, I mean, they're they're even allowing people like me with super small channels to post their um, their videos or content up there. I think I've, I've done it once. Um, um, 
myself and then he did it once for me with it. I actually didn't know that he did it. He did it like, uh, I think he told me or I found out about it a, a different way. I can't remember how that played out, but he did it on his own and I really appreciate him for doing that. Um, yeah, you guys should definitely check him out on, uh, on YouTube for sure. He's a pretty awesome guy. But this article covers a lot of information. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see why they picked Fat Pikachu as Dynamax. Because I actually, my favorite form of Pikachu is obviously the fat version, but I more particularly like the fat version from the manga with the, where Pikachu is just like this ball, this, <laughs> everything is a, like, you can't tell where its chin starts or where anything ends. It's just this, is a super skinny tail. I like Red's Pikachu in short. Um, but I'd love to see how this plays out. I'm really interested to see how we moved away from uh, Sobel being a thespian, like a, an actor into an, a secret agent, and how this whole like groupy thing is gonna play out with the drums because it seems like a like a big Donkey Kong thing to be honest with you guys, but that's personally just me. Um, Corgi Pokemon, can't wait to see it. I also can't wait to see how Meowth, Pikachu, and Lapras are gonna look like. Um, for sure and that farfetch thing because farfetch needs some more he needs some love so does dunsparce but i guess we'll see how that all plays out um i think that'll do it peace love and pokemon to all of you dom out